Welcome to a new video, today we'll see how Manchester United would play under Eric Ten Hag. First we'll see his tactics at Ajax, then how he would set up Man United. Primarily we'll analyze how his team play with possession. His team usually plays with a 4-5-1, but they always have variations because they can switch to a 4-3-3 or to a 3-4-3. Mostly Eric Ten Hag's teams have two ways to play out from the back. The fullbacks and the defensive midfielder play a crucial role in this phase. First of all, the fullbacks play high and wide. The defensive midfielder comes near the box to help to the central backs, so they have plenty of options to play forward. When the fullbacks have the ball, the wingers play narrow to try to occupy more spaces up front. As we can see only 5 players help the goalkeeper to play out from the back, and the fullbacks play high up. For the second way to play out from the back, one fullback becomes a midfielder and the other a central back. This numerical superiority in the midfield attracts the mark of the opponents, therefore the wingers play wide and with a space. Also it's important to point that the fullback who became a midfielder has a free role to play forward. In the same way the second midfielder has a box to box role. We see that the left fullback became a central back, meanwhile the right fullback is playing as a midfielder and he's free to join the attack. When they are in the creation zone, there are usually 6 players in attacking position. This happens because Eric Ten Hag follows the positional play philosophy. According to this philosophy, you've got to divide the field in 5 horizontal spaces, because this will give you numerical superiority and positional superiority. In positional play, the half spaces must be exploited, because it's very hard to defend the space between the fullback and the central back. This philosophy is also used in Man City with Guardiola, but there is a slight difference, because Man City played with a false 9, so there are rotations to occupy that space. In the final third, Eric Ten Hag's teams play vertical, because they play risky passes and the strikers are always making runs to create or find spaces. When the team loses the ball, they apply counter pressing and take advantage of the offense offensive transition. The striker plays a crucial role when the team is without the ball, because he leads the pressure and he has to be smart to also cut passing lines, but he has to be backed up by his teammates. The wingers must be close to him and the midfielders must cover the passing lines. When the pressure doesn't work, they drop back with a 4-3-3, but they can also switch to a 4-5-1. Besides in the defensive transition, when they lose the ball and the pressure doesn't work, the three central backs help in this transition because they have superiority in counter attacks. Now we will see how Eric Ten Hag would set up Manchester United. The following lined up is based on statistics of this season, where we compare United's players with Ajax. The goalkeeper would be Dean Henderson, because he's better than De Gea with his feet and he's smarter in offensive and defensive transition. The central backs would be Lindelof and Baran, because they are the best United central backs with their feet, they are always looking for passing lines and they like to take risks. Besides that they are fast without the ball, which is important in defensive transition to try to stop counter attacks. The left back would be Luke Shaw, because with the ball he does similar things to Daily Blind in Ajax. He tries to make similar passes in similar zones, yet Blind has more successful passes. Diego Dalot would be the right back because he's better in attack than Juan Bisaka. Also, he's better in reading the game and has a better vision. According to the reports, there would be a new defensive midfielder because United needed and wanted a new player in this position since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Alongside McTominay doesn't fit the qualities that Eric Ten Hag needs in his team, since he usually plays square passes and has poor numbers in interceptions. Donny van de Beek would be the free midfielder, since he knows Eric Ten Hag work. 
He's a smart player because he always looks for spaces and is free to receive the ball. Besides, he makes incredible passes and is intense to recover the ball. He has incredible numbers in creating chances. He's at the top of the list in the Premier League and he's in the top three in the Champions League. This shows that he likes to risk passes, which Eric Ten Hag loves in the final third. Moreover, he helps in pressing. Jadon Sancho would be in the left wing because he's clever and a team player. Furthermore, he is good at dribbling and this is important in Ten Hag's team since he would receive the ball many times with a one-to-one -one situations. The right winger is unknown since Rashford has been poor the last two seasons and Elanga is in his first steps in his career, but he could be a great option. Ten Hag needs a smart winger that finds spaces, takes good decisions and helps in pressing. We don't know if Cristiano Ronaldo is staying at at Manchester United and if United will bring in a new striker. But he has similar numbers in attack than Haller in Ajax, yet he has poor numbers in pressing. Eric Ten Hag not only needs a striker that is good at pressing, but also a striker that is deadly in the box. Leave in the comment section how do you think Manchester United would play under Eric Ten Hag and if he is the right man for the job. Thanks for watching the video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like.